Uh, good afternoon. I am Mr. Sichi. I have been helping out Mr. Mronga to compile notes and uh, some other activities necessary for extended study. So for today, we have graphs and functions. That is the topic I will be teaching you. And then we have graphs and practical situations. This is actually a topic under review. The objectives are, one, apply the idea of rate of change to easy kinematics involving distance times and speed times, which is basically focused on acceleration and deceleration. And this is for this specific video, that's what we are going to look at at first. And then the second objective is to calculate the distance travel as area under a linear time graph. So this one, our speed time graph in this case. So this is our second focus as well. So let's get started. Example number one. Let's say, for example, you have this graph. I had to get this from a physics question paper, but it's still helpful for this objective. You have a graph here. And with this graph there, you have now the y-axis, and the y-axis represents speed in meters per second. You have also the x-axis, and in this case, the x-axis represents time in seconds. So the question comes, for example, calculate the acceleration of the car for the first four seconds. Show your working. Roughly questions like this can amount to about three months or so, yeah, at the maximum. So the first thing you need to do, you are required to be exact as possible. Take a ruler and then count from zero, one, two, three, four. Take the ruler and then you have to place it until it meets the, the graph that you have drawn. So you can just make dotted lines or anything, just as accurate as possible. Once you have your dot placed, you can take the ruler again so that you check on your y-axis to get the corresponding value. Uh, do your corresponding value. So in my case, the rough estimate I get is 50 meters per second. All right. So calculate the acceleration of the car for the first four seconds. Now, since you are required to show your working, you are also required to show your formulas as much as possible. Basing on physics knowledge, I think Mr. Scholar has gone through with you regarding this, for those of you that are doing physical science. So the formula for acceleration is, acceleration is equal to final Final velocity or final speed, since the values are equally the same, which is represented by a u minus uh, represented by a v, I mean, minus u, which is now representing initial velocity divided by time. So we can now take our values to substitute to get the required answer for this. Final velocity. That means from the starting point up to where this point is. Now you look at the speed in meters per second. So what is the value here? You have to find out it is 50 minus the initial velocity in this case is the starting point, which is actually zero. So you get the zero divided by time. Are strictly required to calculate for the first four seconds, so that is for 50 minus zero is an obvious answer, I think. So that is uh, 50 divided by 4. And then, if you use a calculator to get the final answer, you should get 12.5 meters per second squared because it's acceleration. Thank you. Resume. All right, we are done with uh, acceleration. We are moving on to deceleration. It's actually the same principle. It's just uh, one thing that is placed on the other way around. Okay, so in here we still have a graph, and then we are asked to calculate the deceleration in this case of the car for the whole journey. So you need to understand that 
wherever the car was coming from, whatever the speed it was, on this graph it equals 150, decelerating until five a second, that is where the whole journey ended. So for us to calculate our deceleration, deceleration is just negative acceleration actually. So you can now say, in this case, deceleration, I actually prefer writing it completely just to, not to confuse it with uh, distance and all that. So deceleration in this case, your formula is going to be U, which is the final Final velocity. I mean, initial velocity, sorry, minus the final velocity divided by time. Okay. So in this case, our our our, our initial velocity is, is is actually is actually here. So our initial velocity at this point is 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 zero. It's zero, you can see that this point is actually zero for this return graph. We are subtracting our final velocity, which is now 50. This is where the car started de uh, decelerating from. So minus 50. All this divided by 5 seconds, because that is the total time given. 5 seconds. So that will be negative 50 divided by 5, and then your final answer should be negative 10. So that is basically how you calculate deceleration. Thank you. Play. Okay, so we are moving on to objective 2 now, where we are required to calculate the area under a graph. So what happens here is that they will give you a graph with a story on top of it. Like in this case, we have the speed time graph shows the journey taken by pills from a home to a shop and back. So for convenience sake, we might give you letters for notes, but it's actually important for you to take note at the meeting points of the line. So in this case, we have point A up to point B, up to point C, up to point D. So D indicates the total journey. So in this case, we have an acute acceleration here from A up to B, and then a constant acceleration that is B up to C, and then we have a deceleration C to D. The question we have here is calculate the total distance covered by P throughout the journey. That's actually from point A up to point D. So what you need to do first is to understand this graph uh, carefully. So you need to break it down. You have to check now from point A up to point B. What is the time here so that you can sort of like make up a rectangle? So if we take a ruler, if we take a ruler and then try to create a perfect graph here, we are actually going to break this one down, in that case, roughly, and then you do the same for point C, you do the same for point C. C is roughly the 40. It's roughly a thought. But basically, you, are, you will be given graphs, so your stars are actually going to be more perfect than mine. So you now have a triangle here, a triangle, you have a rectangle, and then you have another triangle here. So we are actually looking for the solution. Solution A is for you to find the area of this triangle here. A, B, and then you can put whatever you want to here at this point. So the area of the triangle is calculated by half base times height. Half of the base and then multiplied by the height. Plus, in addition to this, we have a rectangle. In this case, the rectangle. The area of a rectangle is a base, so the base, or a 
whatever the case may be, and then the height as well. The height plus another triangle on the end, basically the same formula. That is height, base, and height. So we need to substitute in the numbers. So half is the base for the first triangle. Look carefully here, you have 0, 10, 15. Back to 15. Multiplied by the height, is from this point up to this point. So, up to 1000. Plus, we move on to the triangle, base and height. We are starting at 15. So the 15 here becomes 0, so we have 5, uh, we have uh, 5 and then 10 and then another 10 that gives us a total of 25. So that is 25 multiplied by the height of this triangle is also 1000, close the bracket, plus the final triangle, this is half, is the base in this case, and starting at this point, it's actually 10 plus another 5, so it gives us 15. The height is also 1000, so it's more or less like the first triangle as well. So let's do the calculations. You can pause and work it out on your own just to get the final values for this. According to my work, the first calculation is supposed to be giving us 7,500. 7,500 plus this. You have to confirm these numbers on your own. Errors are inevitable sometimes. So the second one, 25 multiplied by 1,000, it should give you 25,000 plus 15 times 1,000 more less than the first one, so that is 7,500. Adding all these huge big numbers, we have to give you 14,000 meters. Very much important for the unit. So basically that is how you calculate the area under a graph if you are given anything of this thought. Thank you.